So I'm going to explain you um, how um, some strategies uh, for balancing chemical equation. But first, let's start by telling what chemical equations are. So chemical equations are the language of chemistry when we are trying to describe a phenomenon. So in normally English, you would say that, for example, a fireplace that works by um, burning propane it's operating at combustion and this combustion is going to produce a certain amount of co2 and you need a proper supply of oxygen in order for the combustion to go to completion and avoid the risk of producing carbon monoxide um, in chemistry we would just write a chemical equation to describe this so it's a bit like learning a new language where you have to understand the um, spelling rules that would be how to write the formulas but also the grammar rules and that would be how to write the equation so this is showing you how uh, we can describe the same uh, observation of the combustion of propane but in chemistry terms so we can see that we have um, uh, we have the formula for the two uh, substances that are reacting that are propane um, that's a compound of carbon and hydrogen so we call those hydrocarbons and oxygen so you see that there is way more oxygen then um, propane involved and those two are the reactants so are the, those are our starting point so it's a bit like cooking that would be the ingredients and then we have the products that are um, three in this case uh, there is carbon dioxide co2 and then we have water but then we have also heat uh, and light Right. So this, uh, although they, this is not matter, is energy, but it still uh, can be considered a product. There are situations, like for example, when we are cooking, where we need to provide the heat for the reaction to happen. In that, in which case, heat would be a reactant, not a product. So the reactants and the products are separated by an arrow. So the arrows kind of tell you the direction in which the reaction is going to happen. And then we see that there are numbers. Some numbers are subscripts associated with a, um, a symbol. So the subscripts tell you how many atoms uh, of the element that precedes the subscripts uh, you have in that particular structure, in that molecule. The larger numbers before the formulas, those are called coefficients. And those are telling you how many of those molecules you're going to use so you see that you need to burn completely one molecule of propane you need five molecules of oxygen the determination of those coefficient is the process of balancing a reaction when balancing a reaction you're trying to um, respect the low conservation of mass so that the total mass of the reactants in grams is equal to the total mass of the products in grams and in doing so, you cannot, you absolutely cannot change the subscript because that would be changing the proportion in which the elements are combined and that would mean change uh, their nature, describing something else that's not oxygen anymore, but is maybe ozone. Um, you can only, can only change the uh, coefficients. Okay, so here we see that we also can quantify the heat that is produced in terms of kilojoules. Now, how obviously there is a relationship, a proportionality between how much heat is produced and how much propane is burned. But to understand that, uh, we need to go a little bit farther into stoichiometry and then eventually into thermochemistry. So let's see some examples. Um, the first reaction is an acid-base reaction. So this is a base, is sodium hydroxide, and this is an acid, hydrochloric acid, also uh, called uh, muriatic acid. You're producing sodium chloride and water. So I could do a balancing uh, approach by considering what I have on the reactant side and what I have on the product side. So on the reactant side, I have sodium, oxygen, and hydrogen from the sodium hydroxide and then hydrochloric acid i have another hydrogen and a chlorine on the product side i have sodium chlorine two hydrogen from water and one oxygen so now i can check and i can see that i have everything in identical amounts on both sides two hydrogen two hydrogen chlorine and chlorine sodium and sodium so this reaction is balanced without the need of any coefficient in general if there is no coefficient in front of a um, species consider that the coefficient is actually one 
In this example, I can have the same approach. And I see that I have two hydrogen here and two oxygen. Those are those molecules that always come in the atomic molecules. On this side, I have water, so it's two hydrogen and one oxygen. So I'm short one oxygen. Um, I can only take uh, another molecule. I cannot change the subscript. So the only thing I can do is to take two molecules of water, in which case I would have another two hydrogen and an oxygen. Now I have more uh, hydrogen on the product side. So what I need to do is put a two in front of this hydrogen, and this will give me an even distribution of the elements. So the law conservation of mass uh, implies that there has to be the same number of atoms and the same total amount of grams left and right of the arrow. So, uh, and in fact, uh, I could verify this experimentally and four grams of hydrogen plus 32 grams of oxygen would give me 36 grams of water. Now, what's the relation is between a hydrogen to uh, the coefficient of two and the fact that I have four grams of hydrogen, the coefficient of two of water and the fact that I have 36 grams of water, and the coefficient of one in front of oxygen, the fact that I have 32 grams of uh, oxygen, that's going to be explained and understood when we will um, go through stoichiometry. So <clears throat> again, I want to uh, emphasize that you cannot change uh, the subscript. So if I wouldn't give you the product of this reaction, you might be tempted to write something like that in order to justify that the two oxygen are, uh, are still present after the reaction. But this doing so, you're changing the formula of the product. This is not the synthesis of water anymore. This is the synthesis of hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is a quite a different um, substance. It's a, a strong oxidant and is uh, poisonous as opposed to water that you could uh, ingest without any particular problem. When we write chemical equation, uh, right, and we have, so we have our um, reactants, reactants or reagents is their use interchangeably, and products. There are some additional information that we can include. Some are these symbols in between um, uh, parentheses. This, uh, the first three, solid, liquid, and gas, refers to the state of the matter while AQ means in solution, in aqueous solution. Um, sometimes it's hard for students to understand the difference between aqueous solutions and liquid. Um, liquid needs to be it's something that is liquid at room temperature, like for example, water or rubbing alcohol. Aqueous, think of, for example, to NaCl. NaCl is a solid when uh, pure, but then if you dissolve it in water, it would, you would in indicate that as an aqueous solution. Uh, the arrow indicates the, the, the um, direction of the reaction. Now, in high school, you might have been taught that uh, the difference between chemical and physical processes is that chemical processes go one way only, and you cannot, you cannot undo them. So, for example, if you cook an egg, then you can't uncook it. But um, physical phenomena instead are uh, bidirectional. So you can evaporate water, but then you can recondense it into the liquid form. Now, as you will see, especially in the second semester of chemistry, there are a lot of re chemical reactions that are reversible. So they go, they go both ways, and that's called equilibrium. Uh, for those, we use these double arrows. So the double arrows indicate that, sure, the reactants are transforming into the products, but then eventually some of the products will go back into reactants. Um, certain symbols can be added on top of the arrow. For example, um, this triangle, the, the delta letter, that indicates heating because it has the shape of a flame or just the word heat. Or there can be a formula like an element, or sometimes it can be a, a formula like magnesium dioxide. This is a catalyst. It's not written here because it's not used up during the reaction. It's not written here because it's not produced during the reaction. Its amount stays constant, but it is critical to make the reaction happening faster. So this is called a catalyst. Okay, so let's go to balancing the reaction. 
summarize the reason we need to balance is to fulfill the law of conservation of mass um, and we can only manipulate the coefficient not the subscripts um, and it's a process of trial and error so sometimes you get into a dead hand and you just need to take a new piece of paper and start from scratch but there are some um, strategies that could help and if the coefficient is one you will not write it so there are three main strategies that I would like to share with you. One is uh, do not start by balancing an atom that appears in more than one um, formula because you're going to go around in circles and it's going to be clearer with an example. So in this case, this is the conversion of propane, right? So this is propane. Um, I'm not going to start from oxygen. Why? Because oxygen appears here and appears also here. So if I'm trying to fix one, I'm going to create a problem with the other one. And that's going to make my life much harder. Let's start from carbon because it's only in one compound. So if there are three carbon here, there has to be three molecules of CO2. Again, <coughs> I'm skipping oxygen. Let's focus on hydrogen because hydrogen too appears only in one molecule at a time. So I have eight atoms of hydrogen. Hydrogen comes in pairing water, so I need four pairs. Now <clears throat> I can worry about oxygen. So here I have three times two oxygen, that is six. Here I have four times one oxygen. Six and four is ten. I, uh, ox I need ten oxygen on this side. Oxygen comes in pairs, so it's going to be uh, five pairs of oxygen and I have balanced my equation. Second strategy is if there are polyatomic ions and they are not changing, do not balance the single atoms in that. So don't try, for example, to balance sulfur on its own and then oxygen with all the other oxygen in the reaction. Just balance the whole ion as like as if it was a black box. Again, it's going to be clearer with an example. This is called a double displacement reaction. Um, it's a very common reaction that we we will talk about a lot about that in uh, a chapter that's coming up soon, where we talk about all the reaction equal solution. You see, there are all this uh, information about uh, the status of these uh, substances. So those that are labeled as aqueous, it means that they are dissolved in water. It means that they are very soluble. Um, calcium phosphate that's labeled as S means solid so it means that if I would mix calcium nitrate and sodium phosphate in a beaker and I start from solutions that are clear I would see the, uh, something depositing at the bottom of the beaker and that would be the calcium phosphate that's insoluble so this S sure it means solid but it also practically means insoluble that is a bit confusing because the word soluble starts with an S, but so it's, it's kind of going backwards. So this is called a double displacement. Um, and I like to make a, a similarity with a boron where there are couple dancing, right? Each couple is made by a positive ion and a negative ion. And then eventually they decide to, to switch partners, but they can only pair up a positive and a negative. So the positive here is the calcium nitrate is going the, here is calcium nitrate on the product side is going to be the calcium phosphate and the sodium that was phosphate is going to become nitrate right so let's try to balance initially um, the calcium right so um, we have three atoms of calcium on this side so let's put a three here now let's go and balance the sodium. We have um, the sodium on this side, there are three, and we put it here. Now there isn't really, other than the strategy, don't start from something that appears in more than one formula. Um, there isn't really a right point to start from and an incorrect one. It's, it could be, you, you can get to the same result by starting from different points. Uh, now let's look at the polyatomic ions. Okay, so on this side I have nitrate, right, of which I have two in, in each unit, so it's two, times a coefficient of three, that means that I have six nitrates. Now on this side 
I have only three. So I need to change this three into a six. But then I have messed up with the sodium. So now if I have six sodium, I go back on the um, reagent side and I, there are only three here. So I need to put add a two. So this, this way I have six atoms of sodium on each side. Now, the calcium is okay, the sodium is okay, the um, nitrate is okay. Let's look at the phosphate. So here I have two phosphate. And here I have two phosphate. So I'm good. And this typically happens when everything is done properly. You get to the to the next to the last step, and almost by magic, everything is fitting. It's like a puzzle, like the last piece of a puzzle. Um, when when you know that doesn't happen, and this would be more a situation in the lab where you have to write the products. In this case, I have written the products for you. If you don't have the um, the products and you have to write them. If you do a mistake writing the formula, that's where you would not be able to balance. The last strategy is that in sometimes certain elements like oxygen, it's a biatomic molecule, they come in pairs. So if you end up with the products uh, where the oxygen are um, odd, that seems like a problem because they can only come in pair. So the trick is to multiply everything by two. Uh, again, let's look at an example. So this is kind of a weird compound. Um, you don't have to worry about the name of this because you, I've never asked you to name anything like that. This is a mineral that's called chalcopyrite that's used to uh, produce, is, is, the, is, you, is the main ore of uh, copper. I told you at the beginning that copper can be found native um, in the metallic form, but that's not the most uh, abundant natural source to produce copper. So this is weird because you have two metals in the same compound. So this is a mixed, so it's a mixed salt of copper and iron. So we have oxygen uh, in two of the products. So we are, we are leaving oxygen last. Let's start simple. Let's start from copper, one copper, uh, one copper. Again, if there is no coefficient, it's understood, it's a one. Iron, one on the reagent side, one on the product side, so we're good. What about sulfur? I have two sulfur on the reactant side, so I need to put the two in front of this. Let's write it larger. Okay, so I have two sulfur. Now, uh, what's left is the oxygen. So the oxygen here I have two times two, that is four. And then I have one in the, in the iron oxide. So it's a total of five. The problem is that oxygen comes in pairs. So I can either have four or six. I cannot have five. So the trick is to multiply everything by two. So let's rewrite the whole thing. So what, I don't have anything here, but that means that I have a coefficient of one, right? So if I multiply everything by two, well, I don't have anything here. This is what I'm trying to figure out. So. If I multiply everything by two, I'm going to have a two here. This one is in process. This is going to be a two. This is going to be a two, and this is going to be a four. Now, what happened to the number of oxygen in total? You have two oxygen here. Here we have four times two, it's eight. Eight and two is 10. So oxygen comes in pairs. 10 is good because it's uh, even. 10 divided two gives me five pairs. And I managed to balance the, the equation. Now, classification of reaction. Let's use this to further practice um, balancing. So there are six main types of chemical reaction. The first time is direct combination. So um, this um, equation here is sort of a fake equation that show you in general what we mean by direct combination. A and B are not real elements. In particular, B is not boron. It's just a generic symbol. And the, um, the zero uh, as a sub, uh, superscript indicates that that is in elemental form. So the direct combination is when you mix the element and you form a compound. So for example, you mix iron and sulfur to make iron sulfide. So this would be iron. That can be also a way to 
remember uh, practice names so FIDE right because it's binary and then it's iron 2 how do I know it's iron 2 because sulfur is in group 16 so 18 minus 16 is 2 so the charge is always 2 minus so the charge on iron is plus 2 it could have been also plus 3 so I need to explicitly indicate that in parentheses so sulfur comes in molecule uh, made of eight atoms connected together. So I need to put an eight here and consequently an eight in front of the iron. The symmetric reaction to the right combination is decomposition, where I take a compound and typically by heating up, I uh, break it down into the elements. So an example would be I could break down a molecule of water. This can be done by running electricity. It's something that can be done easily in a domestic situation. You, you just need some water and some uh, sodium chloride to make the solution um, a, conductive, a good conductor of electricity. And then you need a 9 volt battery and maybe a couple of wires of copper and two pieces of graphite from a, from a pencil to, for the electrodes. And so you, if you run the 9 volt current into the uh, water you will decompose and you will see the bubbles of hydrogen and the bubbles of oxygen at the two pole of the at the two uh, electrodes uh, of the circuit so in this case um, i have uh, only one atom of oxygen on this side but oxygen uh, is produced in pair so i need to add a two in front this makes two times two for atom of hydrogen so i'm going to stick a two in front of this hydrogen too single displacement you have an element represented here by a and it's going to be uh, changing to uh, an ionic compounds uh, bonding with b and c that was bonded with b is going to be transformed into an element so a typical example is zinc Zinc can react with hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid would attack zinc and other metals like iron, but is unable to attack more resistant metals like copper and gold. Okay, so you, you have zinc that's neutral, it's metallic, gray, good conductor of electricity. After the reaction, you are producing zinc ion. You don't see the charge here because when you write an ionic compounds, you don't indicate the charges, but if I separate the ions, zinc has a charge of plus two. It's colorless and soluble, so you would just see the zinc disappearing. Um, hydrochloric acid, this is a covalent compound because hydrogen and chlorine are two non-metals. However, in water it would separate into two ions, uh, Cl- and H+. Um, however, after the reaction, uh, hydrogen would bond with another hydrogen and form hydrogen gas, so you would see bubbles hydrogen and you could test for hydrogen with a flame you would hear a pop sound <coughs> so this is an example of a single displacement where the hydrogen is displacing the zinc or the zinc is displacing the hydrogen actually um, so I need to balance the chlorine I have two so I put a two in front of that and then fixes the hydrogen so the, all the other coefficients are one Double displacement, um, that's again is the parallel of the uh, bar room where the, the couple are switching partners. So I can only, um, I have only one option because the positive needs to be paired with the negative. There are only two negatives here, chlorine and nitrate. So the sodium drops the chlorine and becomes sodium nitrate. And the silver drops the nitrate and becomes silver chloride. So in this case, this is already balanced, um, so I really don't have to do much about it. Acid-base reaction are a particular example of double displacement, a special type of double displacement. Uh, in this case, the base is sodium hydroxide, is caustic soda. It's sold in supermarket to um, unclog uh, drains, for example. So it's pretty, pretty nasty stuff. You may actually damage the drain more than you are fixing it. Sulfuric acid, when concentrated, is called vitriol. It's really an aggressive chemical, um, especially when concentrated. It's not just a strong acid, it's also a very strong oxidizer. So if you accidentally pour um, 
uh, sulfuric acid on your hand, you would get really nasty burns. burns. So in this case, um, I'm leaving us setting aside the hydrogen because it appears in a in a in both in the base and in the acid. And we will learn about acid and base in a chapter. So uh, for the time being, just trust me that one is a base and the other one is an acid. Although I've already told you that all acids, the formula starts with an H. Um, so we can start by balancing the sodium. So we have two sodium here, and so let's put a two in front of that. And then the sulfate, we have one on each side, so we're good. So let's uh, look at the hydrogen. Uh, I have two atoms of hydrogen here, two atoms of hydrogen here. Uh, so we have a total of four. And so I'm going to put a two in front of that. Now, <clears throat> for the oxygen, um, there is oxygen coming from the sulfate, but you see that the sulfate is untouched. So you want to balance that as a whole thing. And when you balance the oxygen, you just look at the oxygen in the sodium hydroxide. So you have two and you have two in the two molecular water that you're forming. Finally, combustion, and we have again the example of propane. So we said let's start from uh, carbon. So let's put three here. We have done this one already. Um, the hydrogen, we have eight, so um, by two in the water, so we need four water. And then is three times two, six, and four. Six and four is 10. 10 divided 2 is 5. 